I'm going to look at this video as something a little different and unique from my previous videos, and I want to call this video an open letter or an open video to Seven Day Adventists. I hear, and a lot of you formers have heard this too, and a lot of in the in the comments, uh, when there's a controversial Ellen White video posted where she said something completely stupid, unbiblical, or false prophecy, and she said all of those things. When those are presented, there are a certain little class of Adventists that say, who don't answer it, by the way. They just come out and say, well, my church never mentions Ellen White. I've, I've never read an Ellen White book. I don't know. And they do this, why? They do this to escape the stain of their prophet. And that's all. It's just a means to escape Ellen White. This is an ultra weak excuse. So let me say this, no Seventh-day Adventist member of the Seventh-day Adventist church can escape Ellen White, deny Ellen White, and be an Adventist. Maybe you're an 86% Adventist. You'll get what that means here in a minute. Now, even those Adventists who try to distance themselves from Ellen White, from being stained by her, I'll say this, you practice her every Sabbath. As long as you are a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you practice Ellen White every Sabbath. When you walk around church and say this, oh, happy Sabbath, which by the way, it's never really always happy that I hear uh, how Sabbath is celebrated, but I digress. Do you know why your church celebrates the Sabbath Seventh-day Adventist? Do you have any clue because it's not Bible study, as you're going to see here. Um, nearly all Adventists I, I, I know do not know why their church keeps the Sabbath. However, it was addressed here in this video. Actually, this is part one. There's a part two that follows it, and you ought to watch that too. So let me just summarize parts one and two of that video that you just saw. The Adventist church in New Hampshire was converted to the Sabbath by a track-carrying Seventh-day Baptist. That was the spring of 1844. In the autumn of 1846, after Ellen White had been, had been married, she personally started keeping the Sabbath. Track with me here on time. By the way, it was the six o'clock Sabbath of Joseph Bates that they kept from six o'clock to six o'clock. They did not keep a sunset to sunset Sabbath. Then Ellen White has a vision in 1847, you know, about six or so months after she's married, and then all the Seventh-day Adventist church keeps the Sabbath. Um, do you notice what I haven't said yet? Oh, there's a group of studious Seventh-day Adventists getting, sitting down together and studying the Bible and said, oh, we got to keep the Sabbath. No, it's visions. Silly Ellen White visions. Vision from 1847 starts the Seventh-day Adventist church keeping the Sabbath, and it's still the six o'clock Sabbath. It took J.N. Andrews in 1855, after nine years and 470 wrong Sabbaths, to come in and change the Sabbath time. Catch that, Seventh-day Adventist. J.N. Andrews changed times. <coughs> Daniel 7.25, I think J.N. Andrews is Satan too, according to James White, isn't he? Go look at Defeating Adventism number 158 and 159. You'll learn that. So, but the point here is, is this. You can look at those other videos for all the nuances of the Sabbath that you, I know you don't know. But the point is this. A vision was given in 1847 for the church to keep the Sabbath or Adventist to keep the Sabbath. And we're going to see a copy of that vision right here in early writings. Look with me here. Very same book I held up. I use this all the time. 1882. There's copyright date. Here is the page. The Lord gave me the following vision in 1847. Okay, well, what did the Lord give her? But the fourth, the Sabbath commandment alone above all, for the Sabbath was set apart to be kept in honor of, of God's holy name from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And then look at the other underline. There was a halo of glory was around it. I saw the Sabbath was not nailed to the cross. I saw that God had not changed the Sabbath. There's why you keep the Sabbath. Seventh day Adventist, you keep the Sabbath because Ellen White got a vision. If you don't claim Ellen White, then you give up the Sabbath. If you want to distance yourself from Ellen White, give up the Sabbath. Then you really distance yourself from Ellen White. 
That's the only reason you keep it is because she got this vision in 1847. So your church may not mention Ellen White by name, but you honor and practice her every single Sabbath because of the vision that we just read. Next is the investigative judgment. And of course, any Seventh-day Adventist, and by the way, you Seventh-day Adventists, quit being cheap. Go buy this book. I quote this book all the time. Then I get Adventists say, well, I'm looking and trying to find the PDF. No, this book is not out there on PDF. It's copyrighted by your general conference in 2018. They don't want it out there on PDF. Go buy it. So go buy it and read it. I do. And I'm going to show you several pages from this book. The Investigated Judgment. It's another one of your doctrines that come directly from a vision of Ellen White. And that came from a vision here recorded in 1847. Let's look here. Here's a word to the little flock. It's dated 1847 by James White. And let's just look at the next page. And there it is. Ellen White says, The Lord show me in vision more than a year ago that Brother Crozier had the true light on the cleansing of the sanctuary and that it was his will that Brother Crozier should write out the view which he gave in the day star of February 1846. I fully, I feel fully authorized by the Lord, oh there it is, the stamp of God, to recommend re uh, that extra, which is the investigative judgment that was printed in the day star in 1846 to every saint. And by the way, you, you can do what I did too. You can go out and search a bunch of PDFs for Ellen by the White Estate. They reproduce a whole bunch of them. Here's exactly what one of them looks like. And you can see it's 1847. They caught a White Estate copyright in 2018. Here is the same exact quote I read. That's it. Her vision of someone else's vision, which is higher medicine, by the way, confirms the investigative judgment. What's the investigative judgment? It's Jesus Christ dressed up as a Levitical priest. Look here, I just did a video on that recently. And that heretical doctrine is discussed in that defeating Adventism number 153. Adventists, go look there and look at your heretical Jesus, which is not the Jesus of the Bible, it's the Jesus of Adventism. But anyway, the Jesus of the investigative judgment, not only is he dressed like a Levitical priest, which he is not, um, he's in a physical temple in heaven, atoning for sin since 1844. Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross for a single sin when he died because sins are only atoned for starting in 1844. Now, it's possible only through this vision that you just read that this doctrine is now in your church. Official Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. Matter of fact, I covered this in Defeating Adventism number 47. Proving and showing the investigative judgment is nothing more than a doctrine of visions. No Bible study happening around here yet with Adventists. All right, so your belief, Seventh-day Adventist, in this doctrine, you acknowledge Ellen White every time any aspect of the investigative judgment is taught, discussed, studied in Sabbath school, anything. So both the weekly Sabbath and the investigative judgment directly associated with Ellen White. Sorry, as long as you attend a Seventh-day Adventist church, you cannot escape the stain of Ellen White. And Ellen White is stained. Oh, look at her here. She's stained all over the place. It's time to stop running away from your co-founder. Let's move on to the next one. Are you baptized, Seventh-day Adventist? Are you a baptized member? I've got your church manual here, the current one. I think it's... Uh, uh, General Conference did authorize some changes to this, so I, I know a new one's coming. So are you baptized? Do you know the baptismal vows? Do you remember what you said? Let's look here in your official church manual. Here's the very book I held up. It's copyrighted in 2016. And we're going to look at pages, and we'll do this a couple times here, actually. Pages 45 and 46. Right now, I'm going to focus on baptismal vow number 8 of 13. Just number 8 on page 46. Blow it up here. It says, Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? And you must affirm this if you want to be a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You must affirm the gift of prophecy. Well, baptismal vow number eight, the gift of prophecy, is a vow to Ellen White. If you are a baptized Seventh-day Adventist, then you just made a baptismal vow. You just affirmed Ellen White. That's so crazy. A baptismal vow which affirms a human? Now, I can already hear some of you Adventists. Uh, 
They'll just say, you just showed baptismal vow number eight on the screen, and I did not see the words Ellen White in the baptismal vow. Oh, I often say this to Adventists. I do grow weary of teaching you Adventists about Adventism. But I am here to help. And here to help you, I will. Because you're going to learn that the, the phrase gift of prophecy is just another way of saying Ellen White. But don't take my words for it. Take your own words for it. I'm just going to do a small sample. Let's start right here. 1924. Miss E.G. White was often used by the Holy Spirit to guide God's remnant people. In her, the remnant church possessed the gift of prophecy. Gift of prophecy, Ellen White. Let's look at this next one here. Because God's gift of prophecy, as embodied in the writings of Ellen White, there it is again. Oh, look who authored that one, though. How about that name? Does that look familiar to a lot of you? Neil C. Wilson. Huh. He was a GC president. I think he probably knew what he was talking about. Speaking of the GC, here is your GC book, your 28, current 28 Beliefs book. It says this on page 261. The gift of prophecy was active in the ministry of Ellen White. The gift of prophecy is Ellen White. Ellen White is the gift of prophecy. Baptismal vow number eight is the gift of prophecy is a baptismal vow to Ellen White. And that's what you just did, Seventh-day Adventist. You can't escape her. You may say you escape her, but you don't. So as a baptized Seventh-day Adventist, you've taken a vow to Ellen White. How does that make you feel? You can't escape her. Every day you live as a member of your church because you've taken the vows is a day that you recognize and live Ellen White. You all do. Let's finish up here. You cannot be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church unless you affirm the 28 fundamental beliefs in this very book here that I'm holding up. Right, so fundamental beliefs, which are directly attributable to Ellen White, are four. And I'm just going to go over some of them here briefly. Numbers 20, 24, 18, and 8. Some of this will be a review. Belief number 20, the Sabbath. Well, there's one of your 28 beliefs, but we know where the Sabbath came from. It came from a vision of Ellen White that I already showed you in early writings. That vision from 1847. Belief number 24. Showed you that already, too, from the Word of the Little Flock. Vision in 1846, published in 1847. Here it is in your book. It's belief number 24. That's the investigative judgment. Then we have this. We got a whole chapter on Ellen White. Remember what I said? Gift of prophecy is Ellen White. Ellen White is the gift of prophecy. This whole chapter is a chapter of Ellen White. And we saw that expressed in baptismal vow number eight. Here's a new one we're going to add to the list. Chapter eight, or belief eight of your 28 beliefs, is a belief in the great controversy. And there's Ellen White's book, The Great Controversy. So you cannot be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church without affirming four, four fundamental beliefs of 28. You gotta affirm belief number 20, which is the Sabbath. Belief number 24, which is another visionary doctrine, investigative judgment. So the Sabbath too is a visionary doctrine. And then you have the gift of prophecy, or we have the entire Ellen White chapter 18 is about Ellen White and the gift of prophecy. And then you have to have a belief in the great controversy and well, here's the book, The Great Controversy. You cannot believe the 28 Beliefs book without believing this book, and this book was authored by Ellen White. You can't escape here. So you weak seven-day Adventists say, oh, I never read an Ellen White book. I don't believe Ellen White. My church never mentions Ellen White. Then you can't be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church at all. Four of your official beliefs are only possible because Ellen White put her stamp of visionary authority on them in one way or another. By the way, four divided by 28 is 14%. To deny four of the 28 beliefs is to be an 86% Adventist. Because you're denying 14% of at least what's in this book. Now you're left with four choices. There may be more, but I'll say four. You can deny your belief in these four of 28 and renounce your church membership. Because your church manual says you must affirm the fundamental beliefs to be a member. Okay, then deny four of these and renounce your membership while you're at it. Or just accept the fact that, you know what, Ellen White is indeed mentioned here. I, and you as the Adventist, you'll accept all 28. 
And then stop saying the weak excuse of, oh, I escape the stain of Ellen White. Or perhaps some of you want to renounce baptismal vow number eight, which is your vow to Ellen White. And you want to be a vow breaker? Go ahead. Be a vow breaker. You're already commandment breakers. Be a vow breaker. Last one, you can leave the Seventh-day Adventist church, which is probably what you should do because it's not a Christian church. So you Seventh-day Adventists that try to escape the stain of Ellen White, time to stop and you have been called out here.